need your fountain pen sketchers. I, um, last night I was listening to a radio drama, a play by Somerset Mom, and doodling heads while I was listening, and some of the, as the play continued, I wasn't really trying to draw the characters, but it probably did subliminally make me think certain things. So I just, and then of course the pen I used was making me think certain things. So I thought I'd just share with you that process here, except without the play. You can imagine the play, the drama, the melodrama. But as I keep telling you, and whether you believe me or not, that's up to you. But when I have a pen in my hand and I'm I'm starting to draw with it, it does tell me what to draw. It does tell me, okay, this nib is slightly broad and it sort of has this desire to make me want to go sideways with it. And um, why does it want me to go sideways? It just does. Just take my word for it. It makes me want to... It, it likes making these horizontal strokes. Now, they can't be wide going horizontally, but it's sort of the, the shape of the nib w likes that. Um, so I have this... I don't know what I'm drawing a head with a thing happening on the top. I don't know what I'm doing here in terms of actually drawing. It's hard for me now to draw and talk at the same time. But that's what this pen wants me to do, sort of draw in an angular way. It makes wants me to make sharp lines. I think any stub nib will want me to make sharp lines. Um, let's try a different nib. This one I know has a very, very fine nib in it. And this one... It doesn't want me to necessarily do that. It's not telling me to do that. It's, it's, I don't know what it, this one is telling me. It's very, very fine. And it sort of doesn't mind going in all sorts of different directions. And maybe that's why I'm sort of scribbling. Um, so this could be a very wrinkled lady. I don't know why it's a lady. I guess I was thinking of a veil maybe over this person, but of course it's turning into just this monstrous blob. But this sort of wants me to draw in that sort of scribbly kind of way. And, you know, it can make straight lines, as you can see. This would be a great pen for doing minute cross hatching. I think this nib can get 100 lines, distinct lines, within an inch. So this sort of is happy going in a straight line, but from a sketching point of view, from a rendering point of view, yes, a careful rendering, it would love to do cross-hatching, but for a sketching point of view, um, I would probably draw scribble, more scribbly. Okay, well that's that one. Done those two. This is my Franken pen pen, and this is the one that is scratchy because of the nibs problems with it. And this one is telling me, what is it telling me? I'm channeling its nib. What is it telling me to do? Because it's it's scratchy, um, and it makes more noise, I guess, I'm, I, I'm thinking that that is also determining my my mind to go in a particular way. And I'm not quite sure 
which way it wants to go. I'm thinking, maybe I'm overthinking. Am I overthinking this? Why can't I just have fun? Um, well, I am having fun, but I'm just trying to figure out what kind of drawing this pen wants to do. And I'm unsure about this one. Let's just put this down and try this one. This, I know, is a relatively firm nib. This is the one that I that I used to draw a tractor pole the other day because I can press down and it barely moves, but it feels like it wants to it wants to be abused. It wants to be pressed, even though when you apply the pressure to it, it doesn't do much. Yes, it does something. That's no pressure. That's with pressure. But it takes a lot of effort, a lot of work to, to make that line. And when I have this pen in my hand, it makes me want to draw in an aggressive way. Call me crazy, but it makes me want to sort of push and angrily draw. This would be, if I was a writer, this is the pen that I would use to write an angry letter to my congressman, uh, which he would more likely than not never read and throw away and whatever he would do. But this, this makes me, this, this pen makes me want to be angry. Um, and it's very funny that pens will do that. This wants me, you know, I'm not going to write a love letter. Dearest one, I remember when we last met, the moonlight was just so lovely. No, this is not going to write that. This is going to write, Dear Senator, your policy toward etc. This wants me to be angry. And so if I was drawing a face, more likely than not, this is going to be a frowning, angry face. There's teeth. There's angry eyes. That hardly looks frowny. Screaming face. God damn you. God damn you. This this makes me want to draw in an aggressive way. Let's try this one. This was another one that I, in an earlier video where I showed a tractor pull, this was my other tractor, because this one, similar to the one I just used, the Parker I just used, is wants me to press down, wants me to be angry. But this one um, is less so. This one, uh, maybe because it doesn't make as thick a line, um, makes me just want to be firm. I don't want to be angry. I just want to be insistent. You know, this is this is a different kind of a head is going to come out of this one. This one too is doesn't mind scribbling. There's something about the, the nib on this one that seems to allow... It's sort of... In, it's insistent and indecisive at the same time. If you can... I really don't know what I want to do, is what it's saying. <laughs> I'm insistent about that, but I don't... I, I, I want to do something, but I really don't know what I want to do. It's... Um, this is the one that's telling me the least. It doesn't know what it wants to draw. Okay, now, what else do we have here? This one. This is a slightly italic nib, and like this one here, it sort of is comfortable going sideways, and I'm running out of ink, so I'm going to just put that one aside. Um, Come on, find another pen. This one. This is this is one similar to this again. It sort of feels comfortable going sideways because I think the nib is slightly broad or stub. The nib is 
you know, the end of the nib is shaped like that. So going sideways is not bad. Doesn't mind that. Um, but it also has this nice wet downstroke uh, that and a, a flexibility to it that um, let me fill it up with ink here so I can tell, have it tell me what it wants to draw. Now I'm drawing faces just because I can, but um, this is a pen that I might like to draw a landscape with. And one of the reasons I want to draw a landscape with this is this reminds me of the strokes that you see in the beautiful drawings of Van Gogh. God, his drawings are so beautiful. They're just amazing. They're better than his paintings, I think. Um, they're so textural and they're so colorful, even though they're monochrome. You can see color in them, even though you, I mean, it's, it, let me see if I can explain this. In heraldic nomenclature or illustrations of coats of arms, there's a color code you see in the black and white versions of these of these shields and I would be able to tell by looking at this illustration of a coat of arms that this is a blue background with a red stripe. I think that's what those lines mean. Horizontal lines equal blue, vertical lines equal red, diagonal lines are green, dots are yellow, and when you look at a Van Gogh drawing, he'll draw a landscape and he'll have these beautiful, he doesn't really crosshatch ever, he makes these short little staccato lines and they, they are textural and they might represent blades of grass or you know, rows of wheat or corn or something like that. But they, but there's this, they, they represent, to me, they remind me of this. They remind me of, you know, these lines equal yellow, those lines equal red, and I see color in his, his pictures. Um, and this kind of nib that is similar to the nibs that he often used, which were these cut reed pens, I'm sure, um, sort of a stub nib, this makes me want to draw like Van Gogh. And it's really an interesting sensation when you have a pen that demands that you, or requests, or can, tries to convince you to draw in a certain way. Um, where was that one that was, that red one? Here it is. This one, when I this one makes me want to draw like Giacometti's drawings. He, his drawings are like his sculptures. They're sort of scritchy. They're not scratchy. They're just wiry. And they have um, very thin lines and they're very thin sculptures and they don't seem to be driven in a direction. They seem to be wandering. The, the line work. And um, so it's just, again, there's, there's other pens that I have that are very good for wandering. Um, uh, where are they here? I have one that's, I think this is it. It's a Parker 51. Yes, this one. This is a Johnny OneNote. This is another one that much, just, it doesn't have any, this is almost like writing with a ballpoint pen. And I hate ballpoint pens because they're a little oiled up metal caster that slides around and it doesn't have any, it just wants to go wherever the least resistance is. And that's what this pen is like. It's a 51 with a big ball nib and it just doesn't want, it doesn't want to go in a direction. Most pens that I use want 
like to travel in a certain way, whether it's down or up or sideways or whatever it is, they sort of have a direction they want to go in. When you have a pen like this, it, like a ballpoint pen, it just seems to want to go in the path of least resistance. And this would be great, this pen would be great for doing gestural drawings. You know, when you, you're watching, a, looking at a model and you're, it, it's sort of, an, a, a, if you're looking at a model who's made of rubber, <laughs> this is the pen, this is the pen that would be great for that because it doesn't, it doesn't want you to go in a direction. Any direction is fine. It's wishy-washy wa wishy in that way, which sometimes is really annoying because you want to have your tool aim you in a particular way or you want to just take my word for it I'm, I'm sliding off into not understanding anything at this point but but from when I look at a pile when I take a pen in my hand and almost immediately the the pen will tell me how to use it. Someone recently talked about how long does it take to break a, a pen in. Well, a pen doesn't, isn't broken in. You are broken in. You are the one that changes your behavior when the pen tells you to. Now, put that in your pipe, pipe and smoke it. Anyway, thus ends the reading of the, uh, thus ends the lesson, the gospel according to Peer. And as you can tell, I don't know what I'm talking about. Now I do, I do know what I'm talking about. I just can't convey it. So good luck trying to figure it out. Thanks much.